And our last question for today, um, sometimes after cancer treatment, our mums find that parts of their bodies they previously relied on or perhaps took for granted no longer function as they would like, leading to frustration and at times anger. You have already mentioned some ideas around that, that topic, but I just wondered if you could if you could sort of give me some more ideas about how to address these types of feelings. Yeah, I, I guess, first of all, it is about letting them in, not trying to push feelings out because they tend to, you know, the mindfulness analogy is about somebody knocking on the door. And that's what feelings do. They knock on the door. And if you don't let them in and you keep the door shut, they knock harder and harder and harder until they get in. Mm -hmm. So I would say open the door and let those feelings in, feel them. They probably won't feel nice all of the time, but let them in because when we try to change them or we criticize them or we try and keep them out, they tend to get bigger and louder noisier and more problematic so first of all let them in but I think it's important to see that we can feel any feelings I think most humans that I work with don't want to feel uncomfortable feelings me too me too but but it's knowing that it's possible that we can and feelings can't kill us they can't hurt us they can't harm us they feel uncomfortable and so it's natural that we seek out different feelings but unless we attend to the feelings that are trying to come in they will keep knocking so let them in acknowledge them be with them allow yourself to be angry frustrated sad allow yourself space to do all of those things and be all of those things because they're valid all of them are valid. I guess everybody that listens to this will have been through a really difficult experience, emotionally and physically. And so why wouldn't you feel sadness and loss? Why wouldn't you feel anger and frustration, unfairness, all of those things? They're all valid feelings that tell you something about where your thinking's at. Now, what we know about thoughts and feelings is they're linked like that. So because they're so linked, they come and they go together. We can get stuck in thoughts and feelings for sure. But the nature of thought is it's very transient. If it's flowing as it as it's as we're designed, thoughts will come and they'll go and they'll move and they'll be replaced. We have as humans something like 20,000 thoughts a day. Some of us a few more, some of us a few less. But those thoughts, we're not aware of all of them. Imagine that. But sometimes it's rush hour in our minds and thoughts will be tumbling over each other and we will feel that. But what we try to do as humans when we're feeling uncomfortable thought, feelings and thoughts is we try and change them. And that's hard work. What I would say is when we see the nature of thinking, when it comes and it goes, we actually don't have to do anything. And all on its own, as the thoughts move on, the feelings will move on. So it's allowing, if you can, that flow of thoughts and feelings, because they will always change. So anger, you know, you might be I, I know last night I was really stressed. I don't know why I was really stressed. It had been quite a busy day, but I was really stressing. And I didn't really want to feel like that, but I did. But I also knew, thankfully, that I didn't have to do anything to make it feel different. I just had to let it pass. And when we're tired and, you know, if mums have got busy lives with children and they're struggling to adjust to to changes into their bodies and their life cycles after cancer I guess it's not giving yourself another job not giving yourself something else to do so if needs be be with the feelings and know that without you doing very much they're going to pass and they're going to shift and lo and behold I woke up this morning not feeling stressed not feeling angry not feeling frustrated I just woke up with new thinking and therefore new feelings so it's not being afraid to feel any feelings, even though we might not like them. And knowing that without us doing very much at all, they'll move and they'll shift. 
I think the other thing is, and we said it earlier, is to know that it's okay to feel all that you feel. Your body isn't doing anything against you. It's just not doing what you want it to do some of the times. It's just not looking how you want it to look. And I guess... It's saying my body's doing the best it can, even though it's not how I want it to be. I, my frustration, my anger won't make it any different. It will just change my experience of my body. So that acceptance piece of this is really helpful. But I think we can also think about, I, I do an exercise often with clients that doesn't work well on Zoom. Um, so I'm going to talk you through it rather than do the exercise with you. But I will often say to people, if they're in my room, have a look around and I want you to check out everything in the room that's red. And I don't want you to tell me, I just want you to remember it. And they do that and they really try and remember everything. And then I'll say, OK, shut your eyes. And what I want you to do is just repeat back to me everything that you saw in the room that's blue. And they can't remember anything because they've only looked for the red. They've remembered all the red, but they've been, and our minds are great filters. When we're looking for something or when we're attuned to noticing something, that's what we'll see. So understandably, when your focus is on what your body can't do anymore, what it doesn't do anymore, how it doesn't look anymore, that's what you're going to be looking out for. That's what you're going to be noticing. And we filter out all the rest of our body we look at the failings as we see them so what i would invite people to do is just open that filter a little bit and see what else is there to see about your body what does it still do what can it still allow you to do what still works as it did what's still in your life that your body allows you to do that you love what are the connections that you still have in life that aren't impacted by the cancer treatment and by the changes to your body? So it's opening up what we see again, because I think understandably, when we're in a place of loss and missing and anger and, and you know, wishing things were different, that's what we experience. And again, that's not to be criticised. That's how humans work. But if we can open up our view again of our bodies to more than just what's wrong or what's gone, to start to see what's still there, what can it still give to me? What's still in my life that I can get joy and, and, and fun from? Then we might start to have a bit of a different experience again. We see a bigger picture rather than just that pared down. Because, you know, if I, I don't have, have some beautiful rocks that a client, whoa, a client of mine painted so if i hold that at a distance i see the full picture on there if i do that with it i can only pretty much see blue at that point because i'm so close up to one part of the picture that i can't see that there's anything else there and i think that's what we do with our bodies we get so close up to the things that have gone wrong or the things that we don't like or the things that aren't working so well anymore that we don't see the rest of the picture so what i would invite people to do is feel your feelings don't try and change them but see if you can see if there are any other feelings around to be had when we step back from that close-up picture and see a bit more there is nothing wrong with feeling feelings you know we never complain about feeling joy or excitement happiness we don't say oh i shouldn't be feeling this we just feel it and we sink into it and we enjoy it but it's the same with any feelings all feelings are equal we just have different beliefs about them so when when you think well i can enjoy being happy i can enjoy being excited and and it's all right for me to do that it's also all right for us to feel anger, frustration, sadness, resentment. Let's not judge our feelings, because when we judge our feelings, we're saying that we're getting it wrong. Well, we're just going with whatever thoughts we have. It's not about getting it right or wrong. 
it's about saying, okay, these, this is where I am right now. These are the feelings I'm having. What do I want to do in my feelings? Do I want to talk to somebody about them? Do I want to share them? Do I want to just be with them until they pass? Maybe today isn't a day where I want to feel them. Maybe I'm going to keep myself busy and not have to feel them. I'm not here to judge what you do with your feelings. You know, it's about whatever you need to do in a moment. I would always encourage you to feel them and not criticize yourself for feeling them because we are designed to experience a whole range of feelings. It's how we're meant to be. And yet somewhere along the line, we start to learn, well, I can only feel that because that's not safe to feel. I can only feel that because that's not a good feeling. I know in the past for me, I had this bizarre belief that to be a good person, I couldn't be angry. And so I lived my life whenever anger showed up, squashing it down. And it was a bit like whack-a-mole. It was a bit like you push something down and it pops up somewhere else and you push that down. And it's blooming hard work. So let the feelings arise. We do have some choices to how we react to our feelings. So, you know, I do feel anger now. I don't go around hitting people or smashing things up because I can feel the anger but not have to respond physically to it so I'm not saying just let everything go crazy but what I am saying is allow yourself the space to feel what you you feel honor those feelings and we can have some choice if we see it as to how we react to those feelings but I'm not prescriptive about whether you feel your feelings every single time or whether sometimes you just think, oh, today is not a day where I can feel that and I'm just going to try and distract myself. Or do, do what occurs to you in the moment. But know that we're always doing the best we can in a moment. So if you can't see that you can feel a feeling in that moment, that's all right. That's all right. Do what you need to do. Human beings can only ever respond with the thinking they have in the moment. So if your thought is, I can't do this today, I can't feel this today, you're going to go with that. There's nothing wrong or right about that. It just is. And I think what, what my message will be is try not to judge. Try not to judge yourselves for where you are, how you are, what you think, what you do with your thoughts what you do with your feelings and try not to judge what your body's doing either because it's not about judgments it's not about fault it's not about blame it's about learning to be with what is until that shifts and changes that's lovely thanks very much Sarah. that's been very helpful uh oh. we'll close the session now um and then we can see if there's any questions uh, You're come very welcome, Fiona. All right. Does anybody have any questions that they want to ask? No. Well, you know me, Sarah. I've always got a question to ask. Marvellous. I'd be disappointed if you didn't, Fiona. <laughs> so, I mean, my, my wonder is... Um, you, you say that it's the sort of acceptance of feeling angry or anything like that. And quite often, I think some of our mums feel guilty about having that anger or, for, or whatever. I wonder if it's possible to go one step further and even show ourselves some self-compassion in these moments, you know, and, and maybe do something nice for ourselves just to say, you know, look, you don't you don't have to be guilty or um, about, about feeling like this. Um, yeah, I mean compassion is central to all of this and it isn't a word I use today bizarrely because it's something that I say all the time so I don't know where that word went today but I, I think it's about acknowledging all of who we are all of what our experiences are and not needing to criticize ourselves for that and saying you know I'm having a tough time and I'm not going to criticize myself for having a tough time. You know, why would we do that when we're having the toughest of time? What we need is love and compassion and acceptance. So it's doing what feels nice. It's doing what feels good, because I think criticizing ourselves is never going to make us feel good. And I think what all humans really are wanting is to feel good again. Mm -hmm. That's what we're seeking. So it's about saying, what do I need to feel good again? 
and I guess to some extent that might when you're in a relationship with a partner also involve talking to your partner about what you both need to um, keep that relationship going and take things at their pace and because without communication you do see that some um, relationships do break down as uh, as a result of going through the absolutely and I think it's about acknowledging that any kind of health crisis will change us anything will and when one person goes through something and that change is huge and the other person doesn't necessarily change in the same way we don't always end up being in the same place and being compatible again we may do but it, you can't guarantee that. And so I think it is about communication, but it's also about honouring where you are after treatment, honouring what you need. Because I think a lot of women and mums are very good at giving. They're very good at looking after and putting others' needs first and putting their children's. It's kind of what we do. And yet... What's really important is also to honour our own needs. And, and those needs might change. And if the person we're with doesn't necessarily, isn't able to fulfil those change needs, you know, it's about communicating and sharing, but also about saying, even if this isn't one of your needs, it is one of mine now and I need to pursue that. So I think that... We see relationships changing all the time for lots of reasons. But one important reason is changes in our well-being, changes in our health, changes in our recovery. You know, I, I work with people in eating disorders all the time whose relationships don't necessarily survive because some of the things that held those relationships together change as somebody recovers and moves beyond. And so... It's about, again, coming back to where you are, not trying to hold on to something that was, even though it felt good then. If it isn't feeling good now, can we do anything to make it feel good again or not? But it's, it is about accepting what is. And we don't know if somebody else can help us and shift with us if we don't communicate, as you say, Fiona. So if we communicate that and we share that and we share our needs and we try and help those people around us, support us in what we need now, then that's the best way of people moving along with us. But it's always knowing that there's no guarantee in that either. Thank you. It sounds really negative, doesn't it? And I don't mean it to be. I, I don't think so. I think I think people do change over time anyway. And something like um, facing cancer or any other kind of major illness, you know, changes the person as you see. And um, sometimes people um, may find that they've got something better waiting for them um, down the line. Um, yeah. Stay stuck because they, you know, they can't give up on what they've already had and was once useful to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think our identities are forever changing. We think we are, as we get to adults, we think this is who I am. And then, you know, five years along the line, we think, oh, this is who I am. You know, we are always changing. And because that constant change, you know, not everything around us keeps up with our change and our needs. Um, and it's recognising our innate ability to change and develop and adapt but that ability is different for everybody but I, I think it is knowing that there's no rights or wrongs who we are as human beings and what we think and what we believe is bound to be different when we've been some, through something as life-changing as cancer and the treatment for cancer it's bound to be so it's you know knowing that there is no going back to who we were and and there's learning in every experience but those layers of learning will kind of adapt and change who we are 